The town of Windermere was small but alive, nestled by the foot of the fog-laden hills. Its quaint cottages and cobbled streets painted a serene picture, a stark contrast to the haunting secrets it held beneath. On an early autumn morning, the body of Michael Ainsworth, the wealthiest man in town, was found slumped on the edge of Ravencliff Lake. The town's peace shattered like a fragile mirror. To the naked eye, Michael's death looked like an accidental drowning, but there was something about the stillness of the lake and the unnatural calm on his face that hinted otherwise. He had been missing for three days. It was only a week ago that Michael Ainsworth had been at the Grand Town Hall meeting, announcing his intention to develop a new industrial plant just on the outskirts of Windermere. His speeches were grand, his gestures even grander, but not everyone in town approved of his plans. The plant would bring money and jobs, he said, but some worried about the destruction of the ancient woods that bordered the lake, the same woods their ancestors had protected for centuries. Among those opposing him were his once close friends, Oliver Dunbar, the town's most respected historian, Sarah Winter, an outspoken environmentalist, and Marcus Fletcher, a former business partner who had been unceremoniously pushed out of Ainsworth's company. At the town meeting, things had gotten heated, and Michael made enemies that night. He stormed out, head held high, arrogance gleaming in his eyes, leaving behind a wake of bitterness. No one saw him after that evening. Three days passed, and a strange silence fell over the Ainsworth mansion. Neighbors whispered about the absence of lights, the undisturbed mail piling at the doorstep. It wasn't until Michael's dog was found wandering the streets, collar soaked and a scrap of fabric clinging to it, that someone thought to search the lake. When his body was discovered, the town was thrown into a frenzy. It wasn't just grief, they needed answers. The police called in an investigator from the city, Detective Evelyn Mercer, a seasoned professional with an icy demeanor and sharp instincts. She had seen her share of murders, but Windermere's calm and quiet unsettled her in a way the bustling streets of the city never had. Upon her arrival, she was greeted by the cool autumn air, its bites signaling the long nights ahead. The townsfolk watched her with wary eyes, as though she might uncover secrets best left buried. And secrets, she soon learned, Windermere had in abundance. Michael Ainsworth's body bore no signs of violence, no external wounds, no struggle. Yet there was something peculiar, a small hand-carved wooden figure clenched in his hand, its face warped and grotesque. The figure was unmarked, with no immediate clues to its origin, but it clearly held significance. Evelyn's mind raced. How had this ended up in Ainsworth's hand? And what was its connection to his death? The list of suspects grew rapidly, each with their own motives and secrets. At the forefront were the three who had been at odds with Michael at the town meeting. Oliver, Sarah, and Marcus. Oliver Dunbar, the town historian, was a man bound by tradition. His family had lived in Windermere for generations, and he was fiercely protective of its history. He had spoken openly against Michael's plans to build the plant, citing the ancient wood's importance, not just environmentally, but spiritually. To Oliver, they were sacred grounds. The two had once been friends, but their relationship had soured after Michael's rise to power. Could Oliver's anger have driven him to murder? Was there something about the woods that Michael had violated? Then there was Sarah Winter, the environmentalist. Passionate, fiery, and determined, she had been leading protests against Michael's project for months. The morning of his disappearance, she was seen arguing with him in the center of town. Some said she had threatened him, but Sarah vehemently denied it. I hated what he stood for, she told Evelyn. But murder? That's not who I am. Finally, there was Marcus Fletcher, the former business partner. He and Michael had been like brothers, but a betrayal had torn them apart. Michael had orchestrated a hostile takeover of Marcus's shares, leaving him destitute and bitter. For years, Marcus had stewed in his resentment, vowing that one day he would get revenge. But had he finally made good on his promise? Each had their own reasons to despise Michael, and each had been in town the night he vanished. But as Evelyn dug deeper, she realized there was another layer to this mystery. 
one that stretched far beyond personal grudges. While searching Michael's mansion, Evelyn uncovered something curious, an old journal tucked away in a hidden drawer of his study. The journal belonged to Michael's father, Leonard Ainsworth, and detailed the family's history in Windermere. Most of it was mundane, recounting daily events, business deals, and town gossip. But near the end of the journal, Leonard had written about a dark legend that had haunted the town for centuries. According to local lore, the lake by which Michael's body was found wasn't just a picturesque feature of Windermere. It was once a sacred site, protected by a group of ancient guardians. The legend spoke of an unspoken pact. The woods and the lake were to remain untouched, and in return, the town would prosper. But those who dared to disturb the land would face a terrible curse, one that could manifest in many forms, from madness to death. As she read through the entries, Evelyn's blood ran cold. Could Michael's plans to build on the outskirts of the woods have triggered something far more sinister? Had he unknowingly awakened an ancient force that had been lying dormant? The small wooden figure clutched in Michael's hand seemed to confirm the theory. It wasn't just a toy or an artifact. It was a symbol of the ancient guardians. A warning, perhaps, or a mark of judgment. But then, if the curse were real, why had Michael been the only victim? And why now? As Evelyn pieced together the clues, she realized that the answer lay not in the legend itself, but in the people of Windermere. The town had been complicit in Michael's demise. The very same people who had opposed his plans had been involved in a sinister ritual meant to stop him. Oliver, Sarah, and Marcus had banded together, not to kill Michael directly, but to invoke the curse and let it do the work for them. It had been a desperate act, a final, last-ditch effort to protect the town and its sacred woods. But something had gone terribly wrong. The curse hadn't just claimed Michael. It had been unleashed on the town itself. As Evelyn confronted the three conspirators, they broke down, confessing to their role in the ritual. We never meant for this to happen, Oliver whispered, his voice trembling. We thought, we thought the curse was just a story. We didn't know it would take him, but it wasn't over. As the truth came to light, Evelyn realized that the curse wasn't finished. The ancient guardians had been disturbed, and their wrath hadn't yet been fully unleashed. The air in Windermere grew heavy, the once peaceful town now haunted by a growing unease. The final, chilling question hung in the air unanswered. Had Michael Ainsworth been the true target, or was there something much darker still waiting beneath the surface of Ravencliff Lake, ready to claim more victims? Windermere would never be the same again, and as Evelyn left the town, she couldn't shake the feeling that the silent echo of Michael's death was only the beginning. The rain poured steadily as Detective Evelyn Mercer packed her things, preparing to leave Windermere behind. The town, now gripped with an eerie calm, had returned to its daily routines, but the weight of the recent events hung in the air like a heavy fog. The case, officially, was closed. Michael Ainsworth's death had been ruled as accidental, drowned while under mysterious circumstances. The townspeople, though troubled, seemed willing to move on, but Evelyn knew the truth, or at least part of it. As she drove away from the town, the crooked trees casting long shadows on the road, something gnawed at the back of her mind. She had solved cases that felt incomplete before, but this one unsettled her in a way she couldn't quite explain. There was still one question unanswered. If the curse had truly been invoked, then why had Michael been its only victim? A few miles out of town, her phone buzzed. It was Sarah Winter. Evelyn hesitated before answering. Detective Mercer, there's something you need to know, Sarah said, her voice trembling. I went to the lake this morning and I saw something. Evelyn's heart skipped. What did you see? There was someone by the water, standing where Michael was found. I thought it was a person, but when I called out, they, they just vanished into the fog. A cold chill ran down Evelyn's spine. Are you sure it wasn't just your imagination, Sarah? After everything that's happened. No, it wasn't my imagination, Sarah interrupted. They were holding something, that same wooden figure Michael had. I'm sure of it. Evelyn's grip tightened on the steering wheel. She turned her car around, 
The mist hung low over Ravencliff Lake as Evelyn pulled up to the shoreline. The same uneasy calm that had unsettled her the day Michael's body was found now felt like a suffocating blanket. The trees surrounding the lake were ancient, their gnarled branches reaching out like skeletal fingers, and the air felt thick with something otherworldly. Sarah stood at the water's edge, pale and shivering despite the warm autumn air. She pointed silently to a spot just beyond the shore, where the mist was thickest. Evelyn followed her gaze and froze. In the fog, a faint silhouette stood motionless. It was indistinct, its form shifting with the mist, but there was no mistaking the small wooden figure it clutched in its hand, the grotesque, hand-carved guardian. Evelyn's breath caught in her throat. The figure raised its head slowly, and for a fleeting moment, she could swear it had Michael Ainsworth's face, twisted in silent agony. Then, just as suddenly as it had appeared, the figure dissolved into the mist. This can't be real, Evelyn whispered, her voice barely audible. But Sarah wasn't listening. She had already fallen to her knees, sobbing into her hands. As Evelyn stared at the spot where the figure had stood, she felt the ground beneath her shift slightly, like something deep within the earth was stirring. The lake's surface rippled, though there was no wind. That night, Evelyn stayed at the local inn. Sleep was impossible. Her mind replayed the day's events over and over. The figure by the lake, the curse, the wooden effigy, it all felt connected, but something wasn't adding up. As dawn broke, she decided to do something she had avoided. Read the last pages of Leonard Ainsworth's journal, the one she had taken from Michael's study. She hadn't dared finish it before, out of fear of what it might reveal. The final entry was written in shaky, frantic handwriting. The pact is broken. I fear what lies beneath the lake. It's not just the guardians that protect the woods. It's something older, something forgotten. I must make amends before it awakens. The curse, the curse is a warning, but there's something far worse. If the woods fall, so will we all. Ravencliff must remain untouched. I tried to warn Michael, but he wouldn't listen. Now, now it's too late. Evelyn's heart raced as she read the last line. The curse wasn't just a punishment for disturbing the woods. It was a barrier, keeping something much darker sealed away beneath the lake. Whatever the Ainsworth family had awakened was far older than the town's legends. The wooden figure was not a warning. It was a symbol of protection, meant to keep something far worse from rising. Driven by an urgency she couldn't explain, Evelyn rushed back to Ravencliff Lake, where Sarah, Oliver, and Marcus had gathered, drawn by some unseen force. The fog was thicker than before, swirling like a living entity. The lake's surface was unnaturally still, and the ground seemed to pulse beneath their feet. It's not over, Evelyn whispered. The curse wasn't about protecting the woods. It was keeping something sealed, something that's about to break free. Oliver paled, but we only wanted to stop Michael. We didn't mean to, we didn't know. None of them had known. And now, it was too late. Without warning, the lake erupted, the water surged, rising unnaturally high, as though something immense was pushing its way to the surface. A low, guttural sound echoed from the depths, a sound that was neither animal nor human. The wooden figure, now clutched by the hands of a second silhouette emerging from the mist, began to crack and splinter. Evelyn's mind raced. We need to stop it. The figure, it's a seal. If it breaks, before she could finish, the figure shattered and the fog around them thickened, twisting into shapes that looked almost human, yet not. The townspeople screamed, but Evelyn stood frozen, watching as the mist swirled, its forms becoming clearer. Then, in the midst of the chaos, something strange happened. The figures in the mist didn't attack. They simply stood watching, their hollow eyes fixed on the four of them. The lake grew still again, and the mist slowly retreated. Evelyn's heart pounded in her chest. Had they averted the disaster, or merely postponed it? As the last of the mist cleared, a voice echoed across the water. It was faint, almost inaudible, but it carried with it an ancient, unshakable weight. The pact remains for now. Evelyn looked at the others. 
their faces ashen. The town had been spared, but only temporarily. Whatever lurked beneath Ravencliff Lake had not been fully unleashed, but the seal was fragile, the pact hanging by a thread. They had won this time, but the silent echo of Michael's death remained. A reminder that some secrets should never be unearthed, and some mysteries are better left unsolved. As Evelyn prepared to leave Windermere for the final time, she couldn't shake the feeling that the lake was watching her, waiting. She glanced back at the distant shoreline, where the mist still clung to the water's edge. Windermere would go on, its people unaware of the true danger that lay beneath their feet. But Evelyn knew that it was only a matter of time before the curse returned, and when it did, there would be no stopping it. She drove away, the ancient woods disappearing in her rearview mirror. But the question lingered in her mind, haunting her like a forgotten echo. What will happen when the pact finally breaks? The answer, perhaps, would remain a mystery forever, or until the silent lake claimed its next victim.